Last episode, I built a huge railway line out to the west with a cute little station in preparation for our next big project, an industrial mining town. Today, I built a portable workshop complete with basic create machines, a power source, and all the workbenches I could ever need to make things a little bit more accessible for future builds. But before we get to that, however, I do need to clear something up. And no, I don't mean this village, yet. But it seems quite a few of you were a bit upset that I was just going to completely destroy this village and not integrate it into what we're doing here. But basically, it's the wrong style. We're not going to be making all the villagers homeless. I mean, that's just that's just mean. But removing this village is the only way that I can replace it with a thriving industrial town, give them all some lovely new houses, and of course, give the villagers some employment. The problem is, of course, in order to do that, well, we must destroy the old to make way for the new. Meaning all the villagers over here will need to be temporarily relocated and then brought back in the future. So don't panic, Johnny. Also, last episode, we made this, and I was struggling with a way to turn off the drills. And it turns out there's a very simple solution. And what I actually need to do is just make myself some contraption controls. But if we have a quick look at this and see how they work... So basically, it looks like we can use them to actually toggle on and off different things, look. So whatever it's attached to, it would seem. And we can also put filters on so we can control the different things. Although we've only got drills, so that should be absolutely fine. And that's going to do exactly what we want without having to drive the train backwards everywhere. So let's quickly do that before we get started with anything else today. I think just there will be absolutely fine. So if we have that powered, in theory, it shouldn't lay rail and it shouldn't spin our drills. So if we move forward still, yeah, look at that. Perfect. Although I did break a bit of the track here. Let's fix that. But yeah, that's exactly what we want. Amazing. While I think of it, we're also going to name this train. And we had a really good suggestion from that guy, 7669. And it's just that boring train, which I think is fantastic because it is, of course, just a big boring machine. Boring as in tunnel digging. Okay, I'm not going to explain. But that's good. That feels a little bit more complete now. So let's crack on. The first thing we actually need to do is to make ourselves a bit more food. I've only got 25 hamburgers left and I don't have much of anything else. So what can we rustle up? So I have a problem. Not a big problem, but definitely a problem. When we were building the timber yard, we had to keep coming back here to use our different sort of just the small machines that we've got in here and also to use the workbenches we've got in the basement down there. And there was a lot of going back and forth, back and forth. And that's going to be quite annoying to do, especially when our next project is 4,000 blocks away. So to solve that, we're going to make ourselves a portable workshop of sorts. It's going to have power. It's going to have some of the basic machines, a bit like the starter house does. And of course, it will have the workbenches we need and even a little bit of storage too. So I got to thinking what would tie in nicely with this world as some kind of a portable workshop. And I got to thinking and I came to the perfect conclusion. And that conclusion is, of course, we will build our workshop on an airship. So you thought I was going to say train, didn't you? But no, we're not going to build any train workshop. We're actually going to build one on an airship and attach it to a contraption so we can sort of move it around and take it where we need to go. And that means we can use it for building things where rail lines don't actually exist. Big brain beardy. So as cool as it would be to have a workshop on a train it's just not really gonna work for us so yeah I guess I've said it now we're gonna have to build an airship but before we build the airship I feel like we should build some kind of a platform type thing something that can be used to use as a building platform because we're gonna be making contraptions throughout this series and I think having a nice little platform here where we can actually build them and you know something with purpose is gonna help fill out this area and also just keep things looking a bit tidier so we'll keep this nice and simple I think what I'll do is just put down a girder frame and then we'll just set some iron blocks on the inside here get some stairs in and then we'll just fill out the platform with some tough well, I think that works quite well it's simple but effective and it gives us somewhere to build our contraptions now, how to airship. So I have built airships before. I built this one on Truly Bedrock Season 3, and then I built the exact same one again on my Hardcore series, but turned it into a Guardian farm that time. This time, however, we're actually going to do something different. I don't wish to repeat that build ever again. Making that balloon at the top was just an absolute nightmare. And although I could make a schematic of it and bring it into the world, it, uh, that's just a bit boring. That's not what we want to do. So instead, we're going to wing it, which is probably a terrible idea, but we're going to do it anyway. And the first part of winging any build is sorting out your inventory. So I need to dump off all the stuff that I've currently got, which should be easy enough. And there we go, it's gone. And now I need to select a block palette for this build. And to be honest, I am leaning towards the mangrove up here. Although, 
Maybe I should go get myself some warped wood. I mean, dark oak and warped wood is an amazing combination, and I think that would look really good on an airship. But yeah, we uh, we, we don't have any warped wood. We just have a space for it. So that means we're going to have to go to the nether first off. Yay. Thankfully, we have our jetpack these days, so it shouldn't be too dangerous. Okay, so we need warped, and I believe there is actually warped not too far this way. In fact, there it is right there. Look at that. So I think the best thing for me to do is going to be just to grab a little bit of warped wood while we're here, but then we'll also take some stuff back so we can grow our own at home. Ooh, this is a chonky tree. That was a nice harmless trip to the nether. Easy peasy. So let's just get ourselves a bunch of this wood. So I've got a nice variety of the warped planks here, and I've got my dark oak, and I think I'm ready to start building this airship. And for now, we're just going to build it a few blocks above our little platform here. Because once we attach it to a contraption, we can sort of move it higher up and then put a ladder on and so on and do all the things we need to do. But for now, let's just build it here. So we'll start with a frame for the bottom bit. So if we just extend out the front here a few blocks, go up a little bit and we'll just make a rough sort of bow shape here. And then we'll have the, uh, the, the sticky outy bit at the front. I'm sure there's a technical term for it, but it's fine. We don't need to know that. Is it a bow sprit? Is that what it's called? Or did I just make that up? I don't know. I think that sort of shape should be fine for the profile. Now let's try and get the rest of the framework in. I think that's looking all right. Now we just need to connect it all up. Okay, progress. I think what we need to do now is sort of raise up the back bit here. That's really starting to take shape, actually. I like that. But to get a proper feel for it, I need to get myself some stairs and slabs and actually shape off all the edges here. Plus, we need to actually fill in all of the warped bits, which are pretty much just going to be going along here like this. And filling in all of these gaps. Oop. The jetpack is proving to be exceptionally handy here. Yeah, that's going to work really well, especially once we get it all textured up and we get the detail in. We get rid of some of these blocky edges with some stairs. In fact, maybe that's what I'll do now. And there should be plenty of space inside as well, which is good. Well, I've got some texture in on the boat. It's certainly coming together. I think this is going to work nicely. But what I should do now is probably get a deck on here. And I'll tell you what, I'm not too happy about how flat that front bit is there. So I'm wondering if maybe what we can do is kind of raise it up at the front here. So we've got a slightly higher bow. And then what I think I want to do is actually lower this bit here a little bit too. And how does that profile look now? Yeah, that's looking much better. For the deck, I think we're going to use different varieties of spruce. I think that's going to work best for us. A few minutes later and I've managed to get the deck down. It sort of tears up as you go along. And I have actually messed around with the outside here again as well. Turns out I didn't like it when it was thin. So we've actually got sort of two different types of half slabs here. And it just sort of gradually slopes up. And personally, I think that works a lot better. And I also got rid of the beam that was there. We still need some windows on this thing though. And I think that's going to be the perfect spot for some there. But either way, we'll sort that out in a little while. For now, I've just been working out the interior and as I say getting all these floors down and it turns out we have loads of space in here much more than I was expecting I wasn't supposed to make it quite this big but we can work with it now we've got the basic shape down I think I'm going to work on the propeller on the back which is actually going to be create powered this is where we're actually going to generate our power we'll have a spinning propeller and then we're going to have to work out the balloon but yeah we'll figure that out later does it show that I'm mildly concerned about the balloon so the propeller I think it should probably go around about there somewhere let's go get some windmill bearings and cogs and shafts and all those things that we're going to need. So the plan is to have a windmill bearing on the back here with a slab. And then if we attach sails to this, just like that, and then we're going to use the framed ones on the back. And then we'll build up some big propellers on the back here. But what I want to do is essentially have the propellers like that and then have frames going around the back here so we can generate lots of power, but it doesn't look like that basically. I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm living in hope. Well, the good news is we can make it turn. That is very good news, in fact, because now it means we can just build this thing up and it should work. Well, that feels like a good sail shape. I think that's what we're going to go with. But let's just mix in some of this grey concrete powder first, give it a little bit of texture. And I'm going to make sure we glue it as we go along as well, because I really don't trust myself not to. So I think I've glued all that bit together. Let's just test it out. Well, we haven't left anything behind. That's a good sign. Now we've just got to do that three more times. And a fairly short while later, we've got our blades on. They're spinning. They're even going in the right direction this time, unlike when we first built the windmill. But with all those frames on there, plus the wool we've got on there as well, because they also act as sails, that should spin nicely and produce lots and lots of energy for us. In fact, we can have a look. Look at that. 7,680. That sounds pretty good to me. So we will, of course, use that to put in the contraptions down here that we need. But for now... Oh, I need to do the balloon. And apart from deciding that I think I'm going to make it out of limestone like that. Oh, yeah, you may notice I've also stuck the boat together. It's all sticky and gluey, which is nice, but a slight distraction. So, yeah, I need to make a nice big balloon up here. I'm going to use the limestone and I'm going to hope for the best. Really? That's that's pretty much all I can do.
it's been quite painful so far, but it is coming along. I think it's looking pretty good, but could look a bit better. I mean, for a start, we need to get some texture into this balloon here. Maybe get some in the wood. We need to get some extra details on. And I did try using some rope as well, which did also look quite cool. But then I glued everything together because I wanted to see if this would work as a contraption. And you'll be pleased to know that if I do this and then pick it up, it disappears completely. Who are you? Who are so wise in the ways of science? So it definitely works as a contraption, but the problem I do have is that for some reason ropes just don't super glue. You can't seem to super glue the ropes to anything. So although they looked cool, I didn't get to keep them, which is a shame because I quite wanted them, if I'm honest. I've also had to actually make the boat a little bit bigger because if we hop outside here, when I built the balloon, it was a little bit too far forward. So I had to do a little bit of jiggery pokery and essentially just make the boat about three blocks bigger. And uh, I don't know, it still looks a little bit weird, but not as weird as it did, which is good. So we now have a massive boat that we can kit out. We've got plenty of space down here for all the workshops and machines and things like that. But not only that, we do, of course, have a massive balloon. And if we go up here, look at all the space in here. This is incredible. But although there is a lot of space in here, we're probably going to try and avoid using it if we can, because, well, it is a contraption after all. We don't want to go overkill. I mean, we might have already done that, but we don't want to go any more overkill. And I'm also hoping that the way that I've glued all this together, anything else we add down here should already be in a sticky box. So we should just be able to place things and yeah, we can see the green marks coming out. So that's good. So we should just be able to crack on and anything we put down will just become part of the contraption. This is awesome and I love it. But one thing I do want to do is raise its height off the ground now because it's kind of actually hard to see exactly what it looks like because there's so much else going on around here. So I want to raise it right up in the sky so we can get a proper look. There we go. Now we can see it properly. And it definitely looks better when it's away from all the clutter from down there. But it also needs a lot of detail. It needs some lights. And it needs a whole bunch of machines. So I guess I should probably go craft all the things we're going to need for the next step. Well, I've got the basics. Let's see if we can work out a layout. And the first thing I want to do is get in a speed controller. Because I want to make sure that we've got full control over what's going on over here. And if we do it like this, then we can make sure we've always got access down here. So we have the mixer and the slicer that are going to be running on cogs. In fact, we've also got the millstone, which is going to run on cogs as well. So I do wonder maybe what we can do if we bust a hole in the floor here. So for loading up the millstone, we should probably put a barrel in the floor there. Although that's not actually going to work because what I need to do is put in a chute before we put in the barrel. And if I just move that doorway to the other side, that will hide that nicely as well. Then we need another chute below that and a barrel. We need a deployer for that one and we need a basin for the mixer. Where's the mixer gone? There it is. Okay, good stuff. Now to get these powered. So if we put a vertical gearbox there. To be honest, to keep this cheap, I'm just going to use a bunch of cogs. And a shaft there. We'll crank the speed up to 256. We'll see how far we get with that. But uh, yeah, I imagine we're going to have to turn that down at some point. And then what we'll do is just something like this. Um, I'm going to need a gearbox there and a gearbox there as well. We want that like that. And if we put the depots down here, we should be able to get a mechanical press there, which is powered and a deployer there. Look at that. And they're all running at full speed. And the last thing I want to get in here is a washer, but this one's going to be a bit more interesting because I need to make sure I've actually got space to be able to put in things. Um, da -da 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 -da. How are we going to do this? So that area there is where the water or lava is going to go. And we're also going to have to make sure we don't actually leave it when we dismantle the contraption because the water and the lava, well, they won't get stuck. That will just get left behind. So we'll have this in here, but we'll have to be very, very careful with it. So if we go up here, where does that sit? Oh, it sits in a really awkward place as well. Hmm. Yeah, to get that powered, it's just, it's just not really going to work, is it? I wonder. Maybe we can try putting it over the other side here. No, I don't think that's going to work either. We might have to do a horizontal one. So in theory, just something as simple as that should work. So I think that's all the machines we're going to need. Right, well, I've got a bunch of workshops. The question is, how do we fit them in? I suppose, how many, how many do I have? Seven? That's just awkward. So I think I have a plan for these workbenches. And what I might do is just some kind of a tiered system here. So we'll put the ones we're more likely to use near the front and the ones we're less likely to use towards the back. Something like that. I mean, it's a little bit cramped, but at least they're all in. And then that means we can use this entire wall here for storage, which is good because, yeah, we're probably going to want a reasonable amount of storage here. And although I doubt we'll use them, I've got the furnaces and smokers and things in as well. And we just need some lighting. So we'll stick one in the window there. Hide one in the corner up there as well. That's fine. And we'll stick one there. And yeah, we've still got plenty to sort out up on the deck. But I think the lower deck 
It's looking pretty good. Back here on the outside, however, I want to sort out the bottom of this boat. It's way too flat. So what I'm thinking is we'll use some of these half slabs here. And then we'll just apply warped wood here. In fact, we need to replace some of these ones here with dark oak. We're just going to bring this out one more row. And now, in theory, we should actually be able to improve the headroom in here. All right, looking pretty good. I think we're there on this floor. We've got all of our little basic storage. We've got all of our workbenches. And we've got the basic machines we're going to need. This is good. I still need somewhere to sleep, however. So we might put a bed in here, sort of disguised as a chair, probably. And then we just need to clutter the deck up here with a whole bunch of barrels and storage, get a bit of extra lighting in. And I've got a lot of detailing to do as well because, well, we need to sort out this. This just looks horrible at the moment. What with it being all one colour the way that it is right now. But not only that, I want to make this look a lot more steampunky than it currently is. And I should probably spawn proof the roof as well with a bit of wool. But I want to stick a bunch of stuff to the outside here. We'll get some spinning moving bits. We'll get some lights hanging down. We'll probably get some ropes hanging down from here as well. Although we're going to have to use fences. What with the ropes not actually sticking. So basically, I've just got to run around and decorate this thing and make it look awesome. But before I do any of that, I want to make sure that the things I've put in there... I should have actually had my jetpack on for that. But I want to make sure the things I've put in there are stuck to it. And hopefully... Hopefully, they should be. Oh, something's been left behind. What's that? Okay, just a few entities that I had floating around. But this is good. We've managed to clear up the whole airship. And if we re-solidify it, everything's looking wonderful. Excellent. Right, well, I guess it's time to crank on some funky music and get this thing looking good. I think I'm just about done over here and I am loving how that's come out. We jump into free cam here so we can have a proper look. I've used lots of fences to have sort of dangling ropes. We've also got some shroom lamps here with jungle trapdoors, which just add some nice lighting to it. And we've also got some sort of dangly lights hovering around the outside too. I also managed to get a bit of texture in the top there. We've just got some cut limestone. That's all it really needed. I did try to mix in some other blocks, but it just sort of stood out too much. But I think that works nicely. Up on the deck here, I've just put in lots and lots of barrels. We've got a few plant pots and things like that as well. So we can use this as a dumping ground if we need. But to be honest, it's mainly just for looks and to keep the deck looking a little bit more cluttered. I also got rid of the central mast as it's not really needed on an airship. And it did look a bit weird, to be honest. It made it look too rigid. But that also gave us space to be able to hang some lights, which looks pretty cool. Up the top here, I've used a water wheel as a steering wheel. I did try with a flywheel, but it was just too big, really, which was a bit of a shame. And in here, we've just got a few bookshelves, my bed, and the storage just carries on all the way down. Although one thing I do need to do is get a storage controller in. So let's quickly go get one of them sorted. So we'll just get that in here. And hopefully that's going to lock all of our drawers. They should all be attached. Excellent. So look at that. We have ourselves a tiny portable base. How awesome is this? What I should probably do, though, is check that I actually stuck everything down. I think I did. I tried to be quite careful with it, but I guess we only really know by trying. Oh, amazing. First time. Woo! That makes me incredibly happy. I mean, it's taken me two real life days to do this, but it's going to save me so much travel time in future. And if we decide we want a fleet of them, we can just use the schematic cannon. I saw you bogging at me. Let's just ignore them, shall we? And I've completely lost my train of thought now as well. So let's just skip ahead to the next bit because I can't remember what I was saying. Oh yes, that was it. There's still one thing missing from this. We need ourselves a mascot. And if I remember correctly, right at the beginning of the series, we came across some monkeys, some tiny, tiny little monkeys, capuchin monkeys or something like that over in the jungle. And I wonder, can we turn one of those into a pet and have ourselves a little pet on our vessel? I mean, how awesome would that be? And although we could jetpack over there, I think it's about time we took Dill out for a ride. Come on, fella. You've been trapped in there with all those animals for ages. It's not good for your health. And running on rail tracks probably isn't good for anyone's health, but let's just quickly skip past that. Let's go find ourselves a monkey. A monkey. So the question is, which one do we want? Oh, he's quite active. He came over to say hello. Come on then, fella. Will you be my friend if I keep giving you bananas? 
what, what are you doing? Okay, he's following, staying, wandering. Oh, amazing. So if I set him to follow me, is he my pet now? He doesn't seem to be following. It does say that I'm the owner at the top there, though. Well, I think they're a little bit bugged out because he's supposed to be staying and he's just bouncing around all over the place, but laying on the floor. This is just weird. What is going Oh, I didn't mean to punch you. I'm so sorry. Ow, I'm so sorry. I deserve everything. I'm so sorry. Okay, are we friends now? I think, I think we're friends now. Were you only pretending to be my friend before? Right, so now you're following. Are you actually following? Yes, you are. Right, okay. Well, that was just weird. I think it bugged out a bit there. But look, we have a monkey. Amazing. Now we just need to get you all the way home. We can do this. We'll look out for each other, okay? And don't worry about Dill. He'll find us. It's okay. Oh, you're going to need a name and everything. I'm very excited. <laughs> We got him home safely. Amazing. We can make him sit. Look how cute. Oh, I love him. You want to come see my new boat? Hey, look, look at this. How cool is this place? Oh, wait a minute. You should have your own little bed. How about we give you a nice little seat in the corner? Then if we make you stay, we push you into the seat. Welcome to your new home. And our cute little monkey friend is, of course, going to need a name. So please do let me know your suggestions in the comments and we'll get something sorted for him. The last remaining thing to do on this airship is just to add a little bit of stock of various items. Because we have all this storage here, which is pretty much going to be used for just holding all of the variants that we get from these tables. But we are going to need some base resources as well. Mainly just some woods, some stones, a few torches, a bit of food, you know, stuff like that. But I've been smart and made myself a little checklist here. So we're going to quickly grab everything we need, get all that that sorted out and give everything a home but once it's stocked we'll be able to take it over to the new location and we should hopefully have everything we need to at least not have to keep coming back here i mean we're bound to forget something let's be honest right well i think we've got a reasonable amount of stock hopefully everything we're going to need moving forward apart from some cobble actually let's quickly grab some of that there we go let's get a bunch of that in and i think we're good to go on our first adventure with our boat so let's pick this up here grab these oh Oh, oh, okay. I've, I've already, uh, I've already done the lava thing. I almost killed me monkey as well. I'm sorry, buddy. That was very not. Where's he got? He's on my shoulder. Oh, how amazing is that? Right, I should probably get rid of this lava before it becomes a problem, shouldn't I? There we go. We'll just wait for that to flow away. No! 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 Um, I haven't got any water. I haven't got. <laughs> 